Most superheroes have greatly exaggerated physical forms, almost uniform figures of perfection. Even power armor heroes like Iron Man come in this shape. In the end, it is because superheroes are the modern gods, perfect in form, powerful and magical, yet deeply flawed with human defects that they either overcome or indulge. The Greek myths are often reflected in these tales. That said, some of these superhero girls have left some fans speechless with their extreme beauty, making it difficult for most people to decide who is the most beautiful among them. We have made it easier for you by providing our list of cinema's top 10 most beautiful superhero girls. In the number 10 position, we have one of the superhero movies that has faced great criticism. Number 10, Jennifer Garner as Elektra. The world of superheroes will not be complete without Elektra. When Marvel decided to bring this role, they had a tough time in choosing the most suitable actor. Jennifer Garner made the role come alive. Although multiple fans believe the movie failed, Elektra's action made it worth the ticket. Garner succeeded in adding a sexual appeal to the movie without the use of skimpy clothes. Her talent is second to none. Garner's charisma is pretty evident, almost intimidating. Besides the movie's storyline and fight scenes, Garner has the best body to play a superhero. She remains one of the finest girls in movie history. Jennifer doing her stunts making fighting look more fluid and realistic. The only problem with the movie was its terrible script and choreography. Meanwhile, Garner will be able to redeem herself in the upcoming movie, Deadpool 3. Let's just hope that the scriptwriters get it right this time. Number 9. Olivia Munn as Psylocke Apocalypse perhaps left fans wanting more from its central mutants. But while it may be best known for a big, blue Oscar Isaac, one of its more underserved characters was Olivia Munn's Psylocke. Psylocke appeared as one of Apocalypse's four horsemen, Pestilence, and didn't have lines. That may have been because the people responsible for giving them to her didn't know much about Psylocke, at least according to Munn. Notwithstanding this, Munn did justice to her role with her beauty. She rocked her outfit hard. Nothing would improve that lousy script, so you might as well get paid the big bucks to cosplay and look amazing. Because most comic accurate costumes look completely ridiculous on actual real people and are stupidly impractical to have to move in. However, Psylocke is an exception. Notice how there were practical boots. Also, observe how the top resembles an actual competitive swimmer suit. It has full bust support on all sides, including neck and shoulder support. You can look good in something like this if you have a fit body, and it will allow you to move well without constantly popping out of it or ripping the material. Number 8. Evangeline Lilly as the Wasp Ant-Man's Hope Van Dyne, played by the lovely Evangeline Lilly, is as sharp and powerful as possible. She tactfully handled all men, including her estranged father, Batshit Boss, and Paul Rudd's Scott Lang. Despite never donning the Ant-Man suit in the first film, she was arguably its best, most capable character. That said, she suits up as the Wasp in its sequel, Avengers Endgame, and future movies. Evangeline Lilly worked hard to ensure that the Wasp's costume looked right in the film Ant-Man and the Wasp. Lilly knew that the pressure was on to bring the Wasp to life in the movie. So the challenge was designing a look suggesting that Hope Van Dyne was very used to donning the suit. Lily worked long and hard for months with the team to get the look right, adjusting and tweaking until she felt comfortable on the set. One of her biggest challenges was living up to the comic book ideals that have shaped the way female superheroes should look. However, her attention to detail on the suit paid off, and she came out looking like a goddess. Number 7. Jessica Alba as Invisible Woman Jessica Alba's beauty is one of the most notable things about her. She was once deemed by FHM in 2007 as the sexiest woman in the world. In 2005 and 2007, she was featured in Fantastic Four as Susan Storm, where she demonstrated perfect casting, her powers were cool and incredibly flexible. Jessica was more than a pretty face by fitting nicely into her role. Her cute blue skin-tight suit black boots, and gloves stuck to fans' memory the most. As her name implies, the Invisible Woman can turn herself and others invisible at will. She can also form several force fields around herself and others that can be used for defense, as a means of attack, 
or even both. She is also fairly experienced in hand-to-hand -hand combat, with notable mentors such as She-Hulk and Iron Fist, and is a capable leader when needed. Number 6. Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique Rebecca Romaine appeared in several X-Men films as the older and villainous version of Mystique. In 2011, Jennifer Lawrence premiered as a younger version of the character in X-Men First Class. This version of Mystique, aka Raven, looked just as good doing backflips in blue and was much more complex, struggling with her desire to fight for the mutant kind and moral compass. She ultimately became a leader of the X-Men before dying in Dark Phoenix. Jennifer Lawrence's casting as Mystique was perfect. She played the part with professional and extreme talent. It was a part that would be easy to mangle, but she kept it straight and true and maintained the character's presence throughout. Jennifer Lawrence admitted that preparing for the role the first time was exhausting. For the first participation in the franchise, she had to spend 8 hours a day in makeup. In X-Men Days of Future Past, the time was reduced to 3 hours. Number 5. Halle Berry as Catwoman Halle Berry's Catwoman made the list because she brought a lot of sex appeal to the movie. Meanwhile, the story of Patience Phillips is a terrible movie. Barry even won the Golden Raspberry Award for the Worst Actress in 2005. However, she accepted that award in person, something no one ever does. As a huge fan of Batman and his rogues gallery, one of the biggest problems with the 2004's Catwoman is that it's a film about Catwoman. Yes, there's a woman, she's hot and dresses like a cat and a whip and fights bad guys, but that doesn't make her Catwoman. Catwoman has had a few backstories over the years, but there are two that are most popular. Halle Berry's Catwoman follows neither of those storylines. She vaguely resembles the Catwoman of Batman Returns, which I consider another illegitimate character version. The only bright side of the movie was Halle Berry's beauty, which was more than enough. Number 4. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman is still the best. She captured the anti-hero spirit defining the character and brought the wicked humor, vicious fighting style, and ultimately, the soul behind the mask. Pfeiffer had the looks, but also the talent. The actress trained in martial arts and kickboxing for the role and is considered by many to be one of the best female superheroes slash anti-heroes of all time. Most people do not realize how complex Catwoman's role is in Batman Returns. She had to play three roles. First, the mild-mannered secretary, then a more confident and aggressive Selina Kyle, and then ultimately, Catwoman, a fearless anti-heroine. Anyways, Pfeiffer remains the favorite live-action Catwoman. No one else has been able to pull off that femme fatale vibe that she did with her voice and attitude. Number 3. Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman Before landing the role as Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot had already been a fixture in the Fast and Furious franchise. At first, Gal Gadot didn't have the Wonder Woman look, which was supposed to be all-American. Her build was too slight for the role, but after putting on the costume, things got a lot more impressive. Although she still looked a little off with her brown eyes, they revamped this version of Wonder Woman into a more rustic, less American look, dropping the stars and spangles for a more functional and muted look. But what differentiates Gal Gadot's portrayal is how apt she is in action scenes. In every action scene, she looks like she belongs and she owns the action. She doesn't look like a prissy woman afraid to break a nail. She's there to fight and bash some skulls. And she does it all with grace and elegance, never looking like a lean woman who didn't have time to fix her hair as she got out of bed. She is the best Wonder Woman we have to date. Number 2. Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow Scarlett Johansson was once tagged universally as one of the most beautiful women on the planet. She first appeared in the MCU as Natalie Rushman, assistant to Tony Stark in Iron Man 2. We discover she's secretly the alluring, mysterious, and sexy Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. Regarding hand-to-hand -hand combat, she's one of the most dangerous women in the MCU. The super spy with a torturous past is also one of its best characters, enigmatic and unpredictable yet always seems to do the right thing. Where Johansson excels is without being too vain in the look of Natasha Romanoff. She is very close physically to the character as portrayed on the page. 
she contrasts the then other femme fatale lead of the MCU, Gwyneth Paltrow. She could handle the physicality needed for the role, and even the slightly husky voice plays as someone who once had a Russian accent. She's also a good match in terms of screen persona for those in the rest of the MCU. Number 1. Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch Elizabeth Olsen has been playing the role of Wanda Maximoff since 2015. The talented actress was first seen in Avengers Age of Ultron, a sequel to the Avengers marking her debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Surprisingly, no one predicted she would become the most beautiful superhero when Elizabeth Olsen debuted as Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch, in Avengers Age of Ultron. Throughout Captain America's Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and WandaVision, Scarlet Witch has become more emphatic, complex, sultrier, and downright terrifying with otherworldly chaos magic, which only adds to the appeal when Olsen is waving her hands around. In the comics, Scarlet Witch wears a one-piece bathing suit, which was upgraded to black and now red leather pants and a coat. Which of these superhero girls is your favorite? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you love watching this video, kindly leave us a like and also hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.